In this ancient village in northern Iraq, the Yazidi religious minority are bringing in the new year. And they have a lot to celebrate. Five years ago, the so-called Islamic State attacked their homeland, killing hundreds of men and kidnapping thousands of women. Now, IS stand defeated. But not everyone is celebrating. After years of sexual slavery, many of the Yazidi women now emerging from the aftermath of the caliphate have had children with their IS captors, children that the Yazidi community refused to accept. This is the story of one of those women, who we've called Juvan. Two years ago, she escaped the Islamic State with her son, born to a Tunisian jihadist. When she arrived home, she was forced to choose between that child and her Yazidi family. I wanted to keep my son, but I couldn't. The community wouldn't accept him. Ayas did terrible things to us. They kidnapped and killed lots of us. I didn't want to offend my community by keeping my son. This is where her child ended up, in a government-run orphanage in Mosul. It has seen a huge influx of children since the war against the Islamic State began. Sakina Muhammad Ali is the local government official responsible for their care. Sakina was approached by Juvan's husband, who asked that the orphanage take the child fathered by a jihadist. Sakina told Juvan that she was giving up her son for a week, knowing full well that her husband would not allow her to return and collect him. Later, a judge put Juvan's son up for adoption. When someone comes and kills all the men in a community, and then that killer fathers a child with your wife, it doesn't matter whether they are IS or from any other religious group. Who would accept that child? Perhaps in the West, that's acceptable. But in the East, it's not. It is an unforgiving position but one that is shared by many in the Yazidi community who say maintaining a pure bloodline is crucial for the faith. For Juvan, it's a position that would tear her Yazidi family apart too. My family and my husband were extremely strict and they separated me from my son. I got depression and I left my other children. It is now impossible for me to go back to them. Juwan went looking for her son at Sakina's orphanage, but he was no longer there. A woman has adopted my child and has taken him for herself. My baby does not know me, but I think about him every day. But I think it's better for him to live with the other person now. It's better for him. Divorced by her husband, she now lives alone in a women's refuge. Juwan may have left the horrors of the Islamic State, but now it is the demand of the Yazidi community that cast a long shadow over her life. 